Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CPES conference. Uh, my name is Mark Kearney, and I'm a third year PhD student here at Virginia Tech. I'm very excited to share with you uh, some of my work on medium voltage packaging. Uh, specifically today, I'm going to talk a little bit about a 10 kV silicon carbide package uh, that was developed here at CPES and utilizes uh, double sided cooling. So medium voltage silicon carbide uh, offers some really amazing advantages over conventional silicon technologies. It takes this higher frequency performance that we've come to enjoy from wide band gap materials, but makes that available at a much higher power level into the megawatt range and, and above. Uh, and this has enabled some really exciting new uh, technologies such as DC transmission systems and microgrids aboard electric ships, uh, VSC and grid tie inverters for offshore wind and solar applications, uh, and high power traction inverters. Now, while silicon carbide has reached a fairly sound degree of maturity over the past decade, there's still a lot of work to be done on uh, medium voltage SIC, specifically on the packaging side. Uh, there's quite a few challenges associated with this medium voltage packaging, and I'd like to take this slide here to highlight just a few of them. Uh, so first you have the, the, the challenge of creepage and clearance standards. So the UL840 standard for insulation design uh, dictates that you need 40 millimeters of creepage for a 10 kV system. Uh, and this increases if you have higher pollution degree environments. So currently the way we deal with this on a commercial package is we use creepage extenders on the outside of the package uh, as you can see in this figure here. Uh, and, and the challenge is that as the, the voltage increases, the packages become very large, which not only hurts our, our power density, but it leads to um, much higher stray inductance. So simply put, as the terminals of this package get further apart, we need to route more metal inside the package, which results in larger stray inductances. Now this stray inductance can really hurt us. Uh, it can really dramatically increase the, the current and the voltage overshoot uh, during hard switching. Uh, and this, this is really bad because the only way we can combat this uh, overshoot is to slow down the device. And that negates uh, one of the main benefits of moving to medium voltage silicon carbide uh, in the first place. So the third challenge I wanna highlight here uh, has to do with the thick insulating substrate that we need to use inside the package. Um, the insulating substrate is required to maintain that isolation between the dye and the cooling surface, and this is a big challenge for us. Uh, the higher the operating voltage of this package, uh, the thicker the insulating substrate needs to be, and the harder we need to work to extract the heat uh, from the dye. Uh, so with that, I want to go ahead and define the research objectives of the project. So we have three main challenges that we're facing. We've got the large creepage and clearance distances that hurt our, our power density, We've got high stray inductances that increase the overshoot, requires to slow down the device. And we've got these thick insulating substrates that degrade our thermal performance. Uh, so the objective of this work is to develop a 10 kV silicon carbide MOSFET package with very high power density that utilizes 2K technologies, double-sided cooling uh, and a custom terminal design that'll help us uh, mitigate some of the effects of these, uh, these challenges. Uh, so with that, I'd like to show you the package. So the package contains a, a single third generation 10 kV silicon carbide MOSFET uh, from Wolfspeed. So this device, this is a really nice device. It has a, a 300 milliohm on state resistance with 175 degrees C maximum operating temperature. Uh, and according to some preliminary data sheets available from Wolfspeed, it's rated for about 25 amps continuous drain current. Uh, so some key technologies that we have in this package are nano silver sintering and aluminum nitrate substrates. Uh, those help us to minimize the thermal resistance. We're also using uh, molybdenum interconnects, which we're gonna talk more about in a minute. These interconnects replace the uh, more conventional wire bonds and help us to lower the inductance and also enable the double-sided cooling. We're also utilizing a custom uh, sealed terminal design, which helps us work around some of these creepage and clearance requirements. And I'll show you that in a, in a few minutes here as well. So here's an exploded view of the package. So the package utilizes what I'm calling a sandwich structure where the device is mounted in between two aluminum nitride DBA substrates. So this upper and lower substrate act as the upper and lower cooling surfaces of the package uh, and interface with the commercial cooling solution that you can see down here on the left. So these two copper uh, cold plates that you see here were, were sourced from a commercial vendor. So the package is uh, assembled almost entirely using nano silver sintering as opposed to solder. Uh, there's still some solder in a few places, such as to attach the spring pin terminals that you see here in gold. 
but the silver center is used in, in all of the critical areas. So this silver center does a couple of really great things for us. It helps us to reduce the thermal resistance since it has a much higher uh, thermal conductivity than solder. Uh, it's also a very rugged bond since it's actually a porous material. So it gives us some compliance uh, in this structure and helps us to uh, improve the thermomechanical reliability. Uh, here's a closer look at the molybdenum interconnect. So these interconnects are attached to the top surface of the die, uh, as you can see here in, in this figure on the bottom right. Uh, these interconnects serve as the electrical connection to the gate and the source uh, in place of a conventional wire bond, but they also enable the double-sided cooling. So they provide this additional uh, heat flow path through the top of the die, through the interconnect, uh, and out the upper substrate. So one of the nice side benefits of these interconnects as well is they help us to uh, keep the stray inductance down compared to what you could do with a, with a typical wire bond. So the overall stray inductance of the package you see here is, is less than 10 nano henrys. Uh, here's a closer look at the sealed spring pin interface that I mentioned earlier. So essentially what we're doing here is we mount a spring pin uh, or a pogo pin uh, using solder to the side of the package. So we, we mount that to the side of the package. That spring pin passes through the housing and interfaces directly uh, to this PCB bus bar. So the, the advantage of this design is we can use the package housing. So this is a 3D printed uh, package housing and we can use this uh, with the PC bus bar to, to fully seal the spring pin and enclose the spring pin. And this will break any in-air path between the terminals or between the terminals and the cooling surface. Uh, now, this is great because as soon as we remove the in-air path, we no longer need to abide by standard creepage and clearance distances. Uh, and we can pack these terminals very close together and reduce the footprint of the package. The challenge, however, is though we've managed to uh, to backdoor this creepage requirement, we can we still really struggle with some uh, very high intensity electric fields around these terminals. So we need to very carefully uh, design these terminals using FEA simulation and verifying it with partial discharge testing uh, to ensure that we keep all the electric fields in check uh, and remove any any significant risk of uh, partial discharge. Uh, with that, I'd like to move into some experimental results. So here is a summary of the junction to case thermal resistance measurements uh, that we took up at our facility in Arlington. So this is a JDAC 5114 compliant test bed uh, that we use to determine the junction to case thermal resistance for both the top side and the bottom side cooling surfaces. So with both these surfaces working in parallel, the overall junction to case thermal resistance is about 0.17 degrees C per watt. And that translates to a 33 degrees C temperature rise uh, at a 200 watt per centimeter squared uh, loss. Uh, so this is about 22% lower uh, than what you would get with a state-of-the-art uh, silicon IGBT module. Here's a look at some of the uh, switching tests that we performed as well. So this is a clamped inductive load uh, switching test where I use two discrete packages in a phase-like configuration. So the one device here at the bottom uh, acts as the device under test while the high side device acts like a, like a high speed diode uh, to clamp the, the inductive load. Uh, on the right is a picture of the hardware, so you can see the two packages mounted here in between two PCB bus bars uh, and the gate driver PCB mounted on the side and interfacing with this uh, low side device. Here's a look at the switching results. So I only have data up to 4 kV since these packages were built using uh, mechanical engineering samples from Wolf Speed. So they didn't work all the way up to the full 10 kV, but we're still able to get switching results up to 4 kV. Uh, the device was switched to a 25 amp load current, and we observed a maximum DVDT of 190 volts per nanosecond on turn off and 129 volts per nanosecond on turn on. So to summarize, I've shown off a 25 amp 10 kV discrete silicon carbide MOSFET package. So the package utilizes double sided cooling to improve the thermal performance and reduce the impact of that thick insulating substrate. It also uses a custom terminal design with fully sealed spring pins and a PCB bus bar that breaks the in-air path and negates that creepage requirement and enables us to achieve this very high uh, power density. So the key takeaways here are that the double-sided cooling enabled a 23% lower temperature rise than the conventional medium voltage packages. And the enclosed spring pin terminal allowed for a four times higher power density and 50% lower strain inductance. Uh, now, while this is a good start, many of the IGBT packages that I've been comparing this to uh, are available with current ratings in the hundreds of amps. So this is only 25 amps right now. And, and to really make this technology competitive, uh, we need to work on scaling this to, to higher power levels. 
Uh, so that's all for me. Thank you so much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference.